Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we gather to reflect on the profound heavenly revelations received by St. Bridget of Sweden, one of the greatest mystics of the Church. These visions, granted by the mercy and grace of Jesus and Mary, offer us an extraordinary understanding of what happens to the soul after death and the judgment process it faces before God. St. Bridget narrates a very detailed vision of the judgment of a soul. Imagine, dear ones, a trembling soul, like a quivering heart, presented before the throne of God. A demon approaches, claiming the soul as his prey. Here is the prey, the demon says to the Supreme Judge. Your angel and I followed that soul from beginning to end, he to guard it, I to harm it, and we were both hunting it like hunters. But in the end, it fell into my hands. I am as eager and violent to possess it as a torrent that rushes down and is resisted by nothing but a small spout. Your justice. The just judge, who is God himself, asks the demon, why did it fall into your hands? And the demon replies, Because its sins were more numerous than its good works. The judge then asks the demon to show the sins of the soul, and the demon presents a book full of sins called disobedience. This book contains seven chapters, each representing a deadly sin. Pride, gluttony, envy, avarice, sloth, wrath, and lust. Each chapter is divided into three columns, detailing specific sins committed by the soul. The first chapter, Pride, shows how the soul gloried in its spiritual life, believing itself better than others. The first column contains spiritual pride in its conscience, for which it gloried in its life, believing it better than that of others. It also boasted of its intelligence and a more knowledgeable conscience than others. The second column shows it boasted of the goods given to it and the servants, garments, and other things. The third reveals it was proud of physical beauty and noble lineage and its works. There are many things in these three columns, as you know. The second chapter, Gluttony, reveals how the soul desired more than necessary and thought only of exalting its name and lineage. The first column is spiritual because it thought its sins were not as serious as told and desired the kingdom of God unworthily. The second column shows how the soul desired more than necessary in the world and thought only of exalting its name and lineage. The third column describes how the soul desired worldly honor and to be above others, as you well know. The third chapter, Envy, exposes how the soul envied secretly those who had more than it did and harmed others with its advice and words. The first column is that of the mind, for it secretly envied those who had and prospered more than it did. The second column shows how the soul possessed out of envy the things of those who had less than it did and needed more. The third column describes how the soul out of envy secretly harmed others with its advice and publicly with words and deeds. The fourth chapter, Avarice, describes how the soul did not want to share its knowledge and goods with others, thinking only of its profit. The first column is the avarice of the mind, for it did not want to communicate what it knew so that others would not receive consolation and profit. The second column says that, being able to reconcile the discordant, it did not want to do so, and being able to console the afflicted, it did not care. The third column is the avarice of its goods, for if it had to give a coin for your name, it was anguished and weighed down by it. The fifth chapter, Sloth, reveals how the soul was lazy in good works, spiritual thoughts, and prayer. The first column describes sloth in works, in the good to be done in honor of God. The second column concerns sloth in thought, when the good spirit infused compunction into the heart, it seemed too distant. The third column concerns sloth in the mouth, 
that is, in prayer and speaking of things useful to others or to the honor of God. The sixth chapter, Wrath, shows how the soul was angry with others and harmed them with its wrath. The first column describes how the soul was angry with others for everything that was not of its utility. The second column shows how the soul harmed others with its wrath. The third column describes how the soul disturbed others with it. Finally, the seventh chapter, Lust, exposes how the soul indulged in carnal pleasures and worldly desires. The first column describes how the soul spread its seed unduly and disorderly. The second column shows how the soul was lascivious in speech, leading others to sin. The third column describes how the soul too delicately nourished its body, preparing many sumptuous dishes. Dear faithful, in this terrible vision, we see the soul condemned by its sins. But let us not despair, for there is hope. When the demon tries to claim the soul, the mother of mercy, the Virgin Mary, intervenes. She approaches the judge's throne and says, My son, I want to discuss justice with this demon. Jesus, with infinite mercy, allows his mother to speak. Mary asks the demon, Tell me, what can erase what is written in your book? And the demon replies, Nothing can erase it except the charity of God. Charity, brothers and sisters, is the divine love that triumphs over all sin. Mary continues to question the demon, asking if there is ever a sinner so wicked who cannot repent while alive. The demon admits that there is no sinner who cannot convert if he wills. This shows us, my dear ones, that the door of divine mercy is always open for those who sincerely repent. The Virgin Mary, Mother of Mercy, reveals to those present that the soul at the end of its life converted, invoking her intercession. You are the Mother of Mercy and have pity on the wretched, said the soul, recognizing its sins and asking for forgiveness. The demon then, frustrated, says, Of this will I knew nothing, but if it is so, you must prove it explicitly. Mary responds that even if it did not know those thoughts, the charity of God is so powerful that it cancels every sin written in the demon's book. Then the judge asks the demon to look in its book and see if everything is still written or if something has been erased. The demon, with surprise, sees that many things have been erased and only trash remains. After this, the judge asks the good angel present, Where are the good works of this soul? The angel replies, Lord, everything is in your foreknowledge and knowledge, present, past, and future. We know and see everything in you and you in us. The angel presents a book of the good works of the soul, including baptism, abstinence, prayer, good works, hope, faith, and the charity of God. The judge, after hearing everything, says to the demon, I will tell you, the books have been opened and read. But tell me, devil, although I know everything according to justice, should this soul go to heaven or not? The demon replies, in you is justice. So if someone dies without mortal sin and had divine charity, he is worthy of heaven. Jesus replies, Therefore, because I have now opened your intellect and allowed you to see the light of truth and justice, tell those who listen, as I please, what the justice for this soul should be. The demon replies that the soul must be purified and that no stain will remain unpurged in the fire. Mary then asks, What remedy should be used to shorten such a long time of pain? Jesus replies that there are three remedies, returning what was unjustly taken, abundant almsgiving, and the offering of the body of Christ on the altar. Brothers and sisters, this vision of St. Bridget teaches us that despite our sins, 
We can always find mercy through repentance and the intercession of the Virgin Mary. She is our advocate, interceding for us at the throne of God. As we reflect on these revelations, let us ask God for the grace to examine our lives, recognize our sins, and seek His forgiveness. Let us pray to the Virgin Mary to intercede for us so that we may be freed from our sins and attain eternal life in heaven. Remember the words of Jesus in the Gospel, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Let us live these words in our daily lives, showing mercy to others and seeking divine mercy through confession and repentance. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, let us entrust our souls to the mercy of God and the protection of the Virgin Mary. May they guide us on our spiritual journey and lead us to eternal salvation. Let us know in the comments what you think, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new videos and to join the community of faith and prayer. May God bless us all.